We were very much looking forward to retirement and spending our golden years together. That's what a man emails me right here. Notice I said we were, i.e. past tense. Needless to say, those plans have changed. We now know that we may not have decades left to enjoy each other's company. Why? Because my wife was diagnosed with lung cancer in December 2020. Uh, she underwent chemo and radiation. The chemo has resulted in a marked level of brain fog that has left her with very sketchy amount of short-term memory, which has resulted in her on relying on this, her husband for everything, essentially. She is also on oxygen therapy and is unable to be away from home for more than an hour or two at a time as she's relying on a portable oxygen when she's away from home. 67, he's 59. Thankfully, he doesn't have a crap old job. Uh, he has a uh, he likes a job, and his work has been very accommodating to him. Well, thank the good Lord for there. In fact, he says my employer has been absolutely terrific. I'm trying to figure out the best way to semi finance retire uh, finance semi retirement now, and basically. <laughs> I I cannot, I just, I'm looking at the stuff that the bank, people, the bank, they, I just, I sickening what these people have done for this man. They put him into a universal life policy. <laughs> They're charging him 1.5%. I just, this is freaking insane. I just, but yet, hey, let's crack down on those people who write LinkedIn posts about the benefits of Roth conversion, because that's where the real evil is. Crazy. All right, so he's got 450000 of which only 30000 is tax-deferred. He's got uh, about 68000 left on his mortgage. Between he and his wife, he spends about 3500 bucks a month. She's already on Social Security because she's <laughs> disabled and she's 67. But she took it early because they needed the money. He's got a vehicle loan, 16000 left on it. All right, so what he so he's paying about five hundred bucks on his vehicle, and I'd get that paid off, free up five hundred bucks right now, pay that sucker off right there, be done with that. Uh, his mortgage about seven hundred five month, I'd pay that sucker off too. So if he if he were to take sixty eight thousand, take about eighty two thousand from his mortgage, from his brokerage account, and pay off his vehicle and pay off his uh, um, mortgage, that free up a thousand bucks, no more than a thousand bucks, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars a month right there. All right, just like that. So then he's going to have about 300, I don't know, 80,000 or so left in his investment accounts. All right, when his uh, his PIA is 2,200. All right, so he's eight years from his PIA. So the way I kind of look at it, he's, he's got about eight to 10 years to live with his beautiful. Um, he needs about 3,500 bucks a month, of which 1,000 is, so he needs $2,500 a month from a, $380,000 portfolio because his wife uh, has $1,000 a month coming in. I hope this makes sense. So they need $3,500 a month, assuming the mortgage and the car is paid off. His wife uh, has $1,000 a month from Social Security, so they need they still need $2,500 a month while she's still around. $2,500 a month on a $380,000 portfolio. We take our trusted calculator. 2,500 times 12, that's 30,000. Divide that by $380,000. He needs 7.8% distribution rate for eight, nine, 10 years. And then when Social Security kicks in, he'll have $2,200 a month. That'll be enough to cover he and his wife just about. We'll assume his wife has passed on since. So he'll have $2,200 a month as a single guy, a widower. No mortgage, no car loan. That's why you must. I mean, if you can't get, if you're, you know, 67, 68, you can't get by on $2,200 a month with your house free and clear. I don't know what to tell you. And he even says, he says, I should be able to get by on Social Security. I told him, I said, just freaking lit. And this doesn't include any money he makes if he's part-time. I don't know. He, he says he's semi-retired, so I'm not sure what that means. I, I just, I'm sitting there thinking, you got to... <laughs> 
you're not gonna have another chance at this. Uh, he's talking about the four percent rule. I mean, oh, for the love, of, not him. I'm not mad at him. The four percent rule has no application here because your better half is gonna be dead before you, most likely in a shorter amount of time. And all the what ifs in the world, you just throw them out. What if she stays for thirty years? Well, you have to cross that bridge when it comes. I would assume you get eight to ten years. And when when you hit Social Security, if worst case scenario is you get a house that's paid for and Social Security at twenty two hundred bucks a month, why would you not take reverse mortgage and give yourself an extra thousand bucks a month or whatever? I don't know what it would be. Eight hundred bucks a month. That's three thousand a month, just a single guy. Yeah, you're not gonna be impressing your neighbors with a fancy new Jaguar or Tesla, but you're impressing yourself with the fact that you're getting by and you're eating okay. Yeah, let's pray for her. Heavenly Father, oh man, the best laid plans. I'm not sure what his wife's name is, but we pray for Miss and him. And G, because I'm not going to say his name, but we pray for him, Lord. Just give them the strength. Give them the strength to enjoy the short gift of time you give us, because it's so short. Like a thief in the night, our best laid plans will go awry. We don't know why. We don't know what the reason is, but we just trust that there is a reason. Just look out for these people, Lord, and please give them the, the courage to tackle these remaining few years and live life in joy. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I pray for you, brother, because, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm 51, man. You know, I'm not that far removed from old G here. You know, he's 59. You know, his wife is uh, 20 years older than mine, but still, all the best laid plans. Oh, sad. All right, we'll see you. Love to hear your thoughts.